Hello everyone, Jordan here today with a bit of a quick video. Today we're going to see if this 10,000 year hack that someone tried on Japanese Windows XP, uh, well let's see if it'll actually work on a more modern operating system from Microsoft. Here we have Windows 10 with the anniversary update running on an HP Pavilion 500-424. This is running on an AMD A8 6410 quad-core CPU with Radeon R5 graphics at 2 GHz. The system has 12 GB of RAM and a 2 TB hard drive and aforementioned Radeon R5 graphics. Um, this system is highly integrated. If you have not seen my video on this computer, go look it up on my YouTube channel and you will get a more in-depth tour of this personal computer and its unique form factor and case design. Anyway, this machine has been updated to the anniversary update, so let's see if the same time glitch bug still happens to work in the new Windows 10 update. Okay, so before we begin, there's a few things we have to do. Well, first, obviously, this would be recommended. You don't have to do this, I don't think. But in case your system is set up to check time from the internet, which most systems are that are running Windows 2000, I believe, or Windows XP and newer, disconnect your ethernet cable. Now, this particular system has integrated wireless technology so we are going to need to go into network settings and turn this off. Um, and there's an easy way to do this. I'm not going to go through the whole technical way of doing this. I just go under change adapter options and just disable the whole freaking adapter. It's that simple. So just disable and then we're going to leave this window open just so that way we can re-enable it later. Of course, it breaks the settings app. Um, I'm also going to quit Skype so that way it doesn't interfere with anything because it just is kind of stupid to have that open. Okay, so what we need to do, I believe we need to go into the root hard disk, obviously. We need to go to view, and we already have hidden items open. Um, I don't know if protected operating system files are also in here, but let's go ahead and check real quickly. Um, I don't remember where the setting is uh, to hide protected operating. Oh, there it is right there. And so you have to probably uncheck this one to find boot.ini. I don't remember what it's called, actually. Um, sorry about all the mini dump files. This machine has been suffering for some blue screen issues recently. Before I upgraded to the anniversary update, it was suffering for some uh, blue screen issues. So I'm just going to do a search for boot.ini. And this might just be a Windows XP specific file that I'm looking for. But... It should be able to be found pretty easily, I would think. I mean, it is in Windows XP, so technically it is Windows NT, which means it should still be the same basic thing in Windows 10. Maybe a slight bit more hidden, I'm not entirely sure, but that's what I would think. I've gone into some very, very stupid entrepreneurship here with the system clock. Apparently, I cannot go past 8,907 on the year side of things. Which begs the question, what happens when it reaches 8,907 on the system year? Let's do something about that. Let's go ahead... Oh, fuck, I have to, set. I have to change the set time automatically to change the date, or the time. As you can clearly see, it's way out of whack, but we're not going to touch that. We're, in fact, going to go to 1259 p.m. Apparently, we cannot change the seconds. Oh, shut up! All right, I'm going to go freehand style here with the iPad. Let's see what happens. <laughs> this is going to fail so much. Oh, you're fucking with me right now. All right. Let's see if we can get this to work. Oh my god. Are you kidding right now? <laughs> we gotta wait 10 seconds. Let's see what happens. Get Explorer open in the meantime so we have something. Oh my god! I broke it! It says it can't go 8907 in the command prompt. And the 
system thing limits it to 2076 i think it was here it is 8907 let's see what's going on in the task manager here i'm just curious let's see local service is unusually high what does that connect to i don't know that's kind of weird but yeah windows 10 is at 8907 even though it's theoretically impossible for this thing to accept 8907. You can see right here. Literally cannot go 8907. Although I might have been putting in January 31st, 8907. Now it's technically, or December 31st, 8907. So my curiosity is going to be... Can we go uh, June 1st? Yeah. Can we go we okay, can we go we can go December 1st 8907 for some reason. I think that's just kind of weird. Now, let's close the command prompt, and let's just watch the clock tick. Let's just see what happens. Because if we can't make it to 1050 on December 5th, 8907, <laughs> such a bizarre date, I don't understand why I'm doing this. Let's see what happens when it ticks over to the impossible date in time. Well, technically not impossible date. I mean, unless you're talking about the life of the computer, then yeah, it'd totally be impossible, but let's just see what happens. Somebody was able to exploit Windows XP, and I'm going to have to try that. I got a computer outside we can exploit with the time equals 9999 trick, so we'll see what happens with that, but this right here, I'm not entirely sure about. I guess we're about to find out what happens when the clock ticks over to 1050. Will it blue screen? Oh, well, that'd be funny if it does, but let's just see what happens. And it keeps going? Um, that's weird. So now the clock is ticking into impossible territory. Let's go back into command prompt with admin privileges here real quick. And let's just set the time to 1050. See? It says it can't accept it. But it, it apparently accepted it. Okay, I just got to try this real quick. Let's restart. Just, let's restart the computer. Oh. Oh. Um, something happened. I have managed to break the start menu now. Um, I managed to break the start menu. Oh. Windows OOP server is now extremely resource intensive, as well as a local system process. Interesting. I did get a reminder saying you need to update your antivirus definitions when I changed the date, which I thought was kind of funny. But, um, yeah, that's interesting. It's now completely hogging. How many? Is it hogging every CPU core? Yeah, look at that. Hogged every CPU core. Interesting. I probably shouldn't have closed that. Okay, now the start menu seems to be spawning once again. That was kind of weird. But,. Yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, let me just set this down real quick. Let's go ahead and run a shutdown dash R dash F dash T zero. And let's see what happens. Will this machine actually boot up again? Or will it actually get bricked by the time bug? That's a very good question. Now the video I watched, 
they actually did not have a reboot take place. But, uh, let's see what happens here with this UEFI system. Will it actually change the date? <laughs> oh, the BIOS came up and says, date. I'm not set. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And it gives us a uh, F1 option to boot. Uh, we can't actually go into the setup to change that. Apparently, well, actually, no, you just press F10, but you can't do that on this particular screen, apparently. We are left with no option but to boot. So let's press F1 and then immediately spam F10. Ah, uh, it already went into Windows graphic mode. Crap. That sucks. Ah, okay. Well, that's interesting. We've gone into the limits of the Windows 10 software clock. Because apparently in Windows uh, 10, you cannot exploit the system clock to go past the uh, the 9999 thing that they had going on. And I just love how fast this computer starts up. That's just ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, that is way too quick for me to handle. I mean, I'm so used to my freaking workstation, and it takes forever to get off that loading symbol. And of course, it's not UEFI, it's just got the typical Windows logo, because mine actually has a non-UEFI BIOS, but that's off, the, that's off the topic here. But funny enough, the clock is still set to 89.07. Are you shitting me right now? That's insane. <laughs> um, I got an idea, and I think this is kind of crazy, but let's just try this real quick. Now that the system has started up, and none of the services are actually running, apparently... Will Task Manager open? I hope it does. That would be kind of nice. Um, and yeah, as soon as I logged in, the system has just immediately locked up. Like, it's still loading, but the hard drive is not being accessed as much as you would think it would. And you can freeze the Explorer just by clicking the Start button. Because <laughs> after Windows 8... And, well, after Windows 7, the Start menu became its own separate application. No, Windows 8, I meant to say. Because the Windows 10 Start menu is its own standalone application. And if something goes wrong, it doesn't cleanly integrate with the Explorer, so you can't actually open the Start menu, which is why the infamous uh, Start menu glitch happened in the original Windows 10, because it was so broken. And uh, it's no exception here. Because, uh, yeah... You can't actually open the start menu now. And I think I've managed to break the system because, uh, it, okay, I managed to get something to want to spawn. Can we do a control alt delete, maybe? It, I mean, it's still working. It's still accessing stuff, but it's like not wanting to really work. I'm trying to uh, guesstimate here. Um,. But yeah, clearly the BIOS, I'm going to have to reset the time on the BIOS somehow. Um, because I'm not going to be able to probably do it here through Windows, and that's a, and that's a problem. Because, yeah, I, I can't do a thing. Like, I can, I could probably, yeah, the whole Explorer just crashed now, because the taskbar went opaque. Okay. Alright. Uh, clearly it wants to do something. It's saying it's busy, but... I don't know. I'm going to give it a little bit. Let's see if it'll launch the task manager here and see if we can shut down Explorer and launch a command. Oh, it looks like it's already relaunching Explorer for us. Nope, that was the control delete prompt. Okay, never mind then. Well, run managed to come up, and it seems to work just fine. Okay, so let's just do this. CMD time... No, date, excuse me. Date. Um, let's just go back to today's date, which according to my phone is September 17th, so it is 09172016. Will it run from that? I don't know. No, it just ran command prompt. Okay, never mind then. But let's just do it from within here. So date, uh, whoops, 09172016. Whoops, there's command, there's task manager one, finally. Ah, it's relaunching crap that I had opened earlier. Can we save the... Oh, I forgot to launch it with administrative privileges. Oh, you're kidding. You're kidding, right? Oh, my God. What am I doing? Anyway, um... Yeah. Um, it is taking forever to do almost anything on this system. I've managed to freeze the task manager now. 
Um, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> um, okay. I think a, uh, okay, there's another instance of Task Manager. Okay, let's see if I can use it to launch something. If not, again, I'm going to have to probably force a shutdown and then force it into the BIOS, which on most HP UEFI systems is F10. On Lenovo's, I believe it's F1 or F2. I don't know about Dell's. I think they use the the, the, the F1 key. Um, from other systems, I really don't know. Maybe Escape. You have to do it from Windows, I believe. But tablets especially, you have to do it through Windows because you don't have a physical keyboard. But I guess if you do have a physical keyboard connected to the tablet through the USB port, then I can see the advantage of that. You just use whatever the manufacturer listed I, or what I mentioned, you know, Dell uses F10. No, Dell uses F1. HP uses F10. Uh, Lenovo uses F2, I believe, or F1. So on and so forth. All right, looks like we're not getting anywhere anytime soon. So I'm just going to dislodge you from the case here. And we're just going to go ahead and... We're just going to force a shutdown here on this. Sorry about the iPad focus, but I'm not really in the mood to pull out the camera right now. So let's just shut this down. I hate these UEFI systems because it's really difficult to get into the BIOS without Windows um, or some form of UEFI software control to get into the BIOS. So F10, hold it down, turn it on. Actually, we'll spam F10 too. Oh, good. Press the escape key for startup menu. It clearly did not work. Oh, it says setup in the lower right hand corner. You guys can't see that, but it says setup. So, if I press F1, do we go into setup, maybe? Oh, awesome, we did. Okay, good. What did the time get set back? Okay, it's set back to 2011. I'll take that. So, time is not necessarily important, but I'm going to put it in any anyway. It is 11.16. It is September 17th, 2016. And that's... Stuck, so we need to save changes and exit. And now Windows 10 should not implode on itself when I try to start it up. Okay, that's good. It's starting up normally. Okay, so it's probably going to take a little bit longer because I forced it off. So that's normal. It's doing a full startup, which is what it's doing. So even then it should be a very fast startup. This is a two terabyte 7200 RPM physical hard drive, which on this system running on a SATA three port is no slouch. It really does get up and haul ass. I mean, it really starts up quick. I mean, this machine was from the, win the very late end of the Windows 8.1 era. It was like six months to a year around that given time period that the Windows 10 update was announced and released or something. I know this because my friend, he had a Toshiba satellite, or he actually does still have a Toshiba satellite, he uses the exact same CPU as this machine, and which is the AMD A8-6410 APU with Radeon R5 graphics. The only thing that's different about it in terms of the hardware is the graphics has four times less graphics memory shared to it by the system. And this sucks. Um, the clock is still set to 8907, and Explorer is completely frozen. Okay, so that's an issue. <laughs> I set the BIOS date to 2016, and Windows clearly did not pick that up. And the reason is because I disconnected the Ethernet. And I actually switched off the set date and time automatically thing. So, that's a problem, because in software, Windows is still stuck to using the, um to still using the software date and time control. So my theory is I'm either gonna have to boot this in safe mode now to get the date and time set, which I always absolutely hate doing in Windows 8 and above because it's a, it's a pain in the ass to do, or I'm just gonna have to bear the waiting out and I'm gonna have to sit here and just wait for hours on end maybe to rechange the date and time back. I'm gonna try the forceful method. Let's just see if maybe I can Let's just shut this down real quick. Hard shut down. Thankfully, I was doing it while the hard drive wasn't accessing. And there's a stupid trick to this. And that is you shut the system down during startup three times. And I know you're not supposed to shut down a hard drive, a physical hard drive, while it's accessing. It's really hard on it. 
but there's no F8 to do anything. There's no special key command to force it into startup repair or automatic repair or whatever the hell it is. Um, you just have to turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it back on. That's really all you can do. So uh, let's try this. As soon as I, well, the bias is going to crack again, but. Nope, 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 Okay, now we're going to get into the automatic repair. I don't know why they don't make this any easier for the end user. I think it's ridiculous that you have to do this to get in this, the trigger the system to go into safe mode. Uh, let me just see if I can adjust the camera here and make it any more visible. But that's what you have to do on Windows 8 systems, which I think is just ridiculous on the end user's end of things. I just, I don't know why Microsoft made you have to do this. I, I mean, seriously. Also, that loading symbol just, like, increased twofold in size. That's just insane. <laughs> I'm running on a 1280 by 1024 monitor, by the way. And um, that's just unusually huge for a loading symbol. But at least it's doing something. Although, hopefully it didn't try to set the date and time to 8907, because that's going to suck if I have to do that. But thank God, if anything happens, I can just reinstall Windows 10... I'll just use the Windows 8.1 recovery disks I have and just reinstall Windows 10 through that and I'll be good to go. So let's just go into advanced options and we got to go to troubleshoot, advanced options, startup settings, and then press restart. And then it'll give us the option to boot into safe mode and I want to do safe mode with networking so I can get the date and time stuff set again. So that should come up and there we go. We got option five. And I'm going to plug back in the Ethernet right now. So just give me just one little second. It's going to look crappy on video, I know, but there's nothing I can do about that. I could probably turn back on the wireless card in the software, but it's faster to go through the Ethernet, in my opinion. And probably ask me to log in here in a second now. Yep, it's passwords. Where's the free of it? Let me see what freaking Okay. So here we are. I hate my password, but now i got to type it in because safe mode. But, uh... Yeah. So currently we're running in 1024 by 768 mode with 32 bit color because officially that's the lowest resolution that modern Windows runs in. And currently it's still set to 8907, but we should not have the obscure system process running in the background. Oh, it's trying to load the Microsoft link. No, thank you. By the way, Chrome 53, I'll get into that when I fix the date and time here. But real quick, let's just set, let's set the date and time back to normal means. So we got to go under time and language, and then we set time automatically, which should fix it. No, actually it won't. Okay, never mind. Let's just fix this real quick. Uh, we have to set um, whatever this is real quick, so it changes the year back to something sane. Okay, 2076. That's something I can work with. Okay, so now I've got to scroll the date back to 2046. And we got to do this again, and then we have to go back to 2016. There we go. Okay, now September 17th, and we'll leave the time as it is, and then set time automatically. Um, it's not 10:54. It is currently 11:24 at night. I'll just set that real quick. Um, well, if you're within the same hour, it'll usually fix itself. So now. Uh, let's just restart and we should be good to go we should be able to just restart this now and it should be fine i hope so although that actually does give me the idea of actually using the windows 8.1 recovery discs on this system one day It'd be kind of interesting the reason why i say this is one because i haven't actually explored the Windows 8.1 installation on this computer. I'm sure it's not much more different than what it would be on Windows 10, but thankfully it's at least Windows 8.1, so I can at least do a safe upgrade back to Windows 10. Um, and the reason is because I don't, I've don't. i never actually done a restore on this computer ever since I acquired it, running the uh, RTM Windows 10. Or was 
Yeah, well, I think it was running the original RTM Windows. No, it was running 10.586. Now I'm gonna, I take that back. It was 10.586 or version 15.11, whatever you fancy it. And um, basically, I just haven't restored it yet. So, okay, so we're looking a lot better now. It's actually not freezing up at the desktop, and it's actually kept the date and time, not a surprise. It says 11.55, like what I said it in safe mode, which is fine. We can just go back in here to settings, and we can fix everything. Uh, Steam wants to check for an update. I'm just going to cancel that for the moment. All right, back into time and language. And yeah, I know, I was the idiot who almost clicked the freaking, what was it, the, uh, the system icon. That's not correct. You don't do that. Anyway, um, let's just do this. Let's go to additional date, time, and regional zone settings. Okay, that's not the control panel I was looking for. Okay, can we do change date and time formats? Nope, that's not the one. Where's the freaking legacy? God damn it, I hate that. I want, there we go. That's the legacy control panel I was looking for that they used ever since Windows Vista came out. Okay, I want update now. This is what I wish was still used. Okay, it looks like it says, it said there was an error that occurred, but it actually received the correct date and time. So that's normal. I just wish they had this legacy control panel applet because this works, yes. This modern control panel applet works, yes. But I, I find this much more functional. It actually gives you a goddamn physical, like, update now, goddammit, button. I mean, that's what the one thing I don't like about Windows 10 is it's forcing people to use the settings app. And it cripples functionality like a motherfucker, if I'll be honest. It really does. But anyway, um, I have now fixed, I've, I've fixed the system to full functionality. Now we can go ahead and go back in here. I'm going to turn back off the hide. Or I'm going to turn back on the hide protection, uh, the protected operating system files option, and then hide hidden items. So now the system has been restored to complete functionality, and now I can go into a vast antivirus and update my definitions. So very interesting experiment. It's not like the whole Windows XP time trick that I tr was going to try with the year 10,000 and brick the freaking Explorer like I did in this video. But still, it was kind of interesting nonetheless. Um, it looks as if they're already up to date. I'm not going to worry about that for the moment then. But yeah, I thought it was very interesting nonetheless that Windows 10 has a different date and time bug. That's kind of interesting. So uh, for the moment, um, uh, I think that's it for this. I had too much fun playing around with this. <laughs> yeah, almost bricked my nice computer. I almost had to use the factory restore disks, which, I, I don't whatever. I'm going to try a different 2 terabyte hard drive in this computer. I'm going to see if I can unbrick the SATA firmware on it because it's it came out of a dish DVR, but it does not like to spin up inside of a computer. I might have fixed it through Linux. I tried using Gparted to fix the partition map, but it still seems as if the firmware does not want to spin up unless it's received a spin up command from the host, which sucks. But uh, I don't know if I can fix that through normal means. I might have to use a specific piece of software that I have to boot up on a different computer to fix that hard drive. But that'll be another project for another day. I have to look that stuff back up. But I think you would have to fix the partition map, which requires a special spin up. Com it re requires a special spin up command through the SATA host. But again, that's just blabber. So yeah, there's my experiment on fixing Windows 10 date and time bug which is a different date and time setting than what Windows XP had. So, yeah, thank you guys for watching this little outcut video.